Uh, my name is Father Neil McQuillan. I'm the pastor of Our Lady of the Valley Parish in Hemet, a member of the Congregation of the Holy Spirit. The story begins with Father Pierre uh, de Glare, who asked me if I had buried a young man. And I told him I never heard of the fellow. And uh, he was very surprised because Pierre is the chaplain in the Kaiser Hospital in Fontana, California and they said, had sent the young man home to die. The next thing I heard was from the parents of this young man who came in to discuss with me the morality of allowing their son to die. He was uh, receiving medication for infections. He was in a coma over a year and the medications were destroying his internal organs. So they were morally concerned about doing the right thing for their son, allowing him to die so as not to prolong his suffering. Either way, the medication would kill him eventually. I offered them to come down to their house to anoint the young man. And, uh, and during the visit, uh, we said the normal prayers that you would say for the dying. And I offered to uh, place a relic of our founder, Francis Lieberman, on his forehead. But in my own mind, I was thinking, how, how sad, it's too late. He's too far gone. And uh, to my surprise, I got a phone call two days later to tell me, while his father was putting on his socks, he reached up and grabbed the sock from his father's hand and says, I could do that. Now, we're talking about a 35-year-old man, a marine engineer, who was hit by a truck while out jogging. And the truck threw him, I think, more than 30 feet into the air, and he landed on his head, and as he went along the, the tar, a good piece of his head was removed. So if you look at him straight ahead, you can see he's missing about that much of his head. And remarkably, he has his total recall. He is not paralyzed. He has full use of his body. His balance is off. He needs some help walking. And he has some difficulty controlling his emotions. But he's alive. And when you ask, who are you, he'll answer, I'm a miracle. His parents have de developed a devotion to Lieberman long before I even anointed him, and still to this day. The doctors, when they heard he was still alive, couldn't believe their ears. Uh, they came from Fontana, which is a good hour, hour and a half drive from where we live, to see him because they couldn't understand why he wasn't dead. Uh, since then, I believe he's had a further surgery because he developed uh, water on uh, uh, pressure on the brain. And his mother was very reluctant to submit him to that operation because the last time they operated on him, he remained in a coma for over a year. The doctors have written this case up. Uh, they are amazed. They cannot explain why he's still walking. They think with his condition, he should be dead. But unfortunately, the canonical services of the San Bernardino Diocese are not impressed with the case. And it's in their office, and they have done nothing to interview him, nor his parents, or, or anyone, as far as I know. Um, I did, uh, two days later, I think it was, bring a healer to see him, and that may have confused the case, but the parents had no special devotion or anything to anything that Healer did, it, it was, I believe, the relic of Lieberman that made the difference. But it's always a question of belief, isn't it? And so people that don't believe in miracles might not see this as a miracle. Uh, I don't think miracles are spectacular things that necessarily get everyone's attention. I do think God does special interventions quietly 
when it serves his plan. And uh, I'm open to the fact, I certainly never thought that he would ever get out of the bed when I saw him in that coma, not responsive to anything, but I was wrong. He's alive and he's practicing his faith uh, very often at daily mass. Yeah, I, I say the debate in the, in the parents' mind was to keep him alive with medications that were going to kill him anyway or not. So they were pretty much ready to accept that he would not survive. And we had this miraculous turnaround. And I say, I visited his home uh, very soon after he, he woke up. He was sitting at the kitchen table complaining that his mother wasn't serving him food quick enough. Very normal young man to me uh, in that sense. I reported, I wrote the case up. I got the doctors to write their explanation of what he has, what happened, what treatments they gave him, and they, they all agree that they cannot explain why he's alive today by natural means. Yeah, so I think it counts as a miracle, but diocesan uh, um, people feel that the case isn't that clear or no, they're not as impressed, maybe, What's called for is more prayers on our part. Yeah, so that the church, the, I, in our community, the people see him coming into Mass. They know his story. And when I bring out the relic uh, on Lieberman Day, you can see the people get online wanting to touch and ask again for miracles for themselves or for, for yeah. people they know who are in need. So. I can't say there's massive response, but I can say the people in our parish think that there was a miracle here. They see this fellow coming in. I've talked to the bishop about the case, and I think he's just let his canonical office operate. The, the congregation has offered to send someone from Rome to help them process the case, but they just seem not impressed. And that's all I can say. But they have never seen the fellow. They've never interviewed him or, or his family. Procedures for miracles these days, they have to be confirmed by local diocesan tribunal, and then they're sent to Rome. So in terms of our general council in Rome, they're aware. They have copies of, every, of, of all the documentation, but until the local church uh, responds, uh, nothing will, will happen in this case. It doesn't matter how much the priest <laughs> believes <laughs> when he puts the relic on you. It, it matters much more what, what God wants and, and what the family is believing. So someone's faith was operative here. I thought he was a lost case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.